Every day, there are barriers that can keep us from our fitness or we can choose to overcome. So today, we're going to go over our tips and tricks on how you can overcome these obstacles to reaching your fitness goals and prioritizing a healthy lifestyle. Before we hop into today's episode, we want to say thank you for tuning in and listening to what we have to say. Over the last three years since we started this brand, we've set out on our mission to help people through the workouts that we create, through the supplements that we provide, and keeping people feeling confident in their workout apparel. If you'd like to support our brand, you can go ahead to fitgrindformula.com and check out our supplements and grab a new gym outfit to feel good and confident in. That's right. So with all that said, I want to say thank you and let's hop into today's episode. Welcome back to our podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about overcoming obstacles in your fitness programs. Yeah, there's a lot of challenges that take place when you're trying to reach your fitness goals and it's never this straight line up, you know, there's always bumps in the road, but we can talk about mindset today and talk about how Just because there's obstacles or bumps in the road doesn't mean that you should just ditch the program that, you know, you have to have the right mindset and there's different things that you can do to kind of get over those hurdles and get over those barriers to reaching your fitness goals. Yeah. When the training gets tough, are you going to push through or are you going to fold? Yeah. That's kind of what we're going to go over today. So mentally, physically, what that looks like and how to overcome those obstacles. So Some examples of obstacles, like I said, are going to be physically and mentally, but things like your time, your schedule, your sleep, your kids' schedules, recovery, injuries, all sorts of things, they can get in the way. And we know from experience these these things can become so detrimental that it feels like it's impossible to get your own time or your own training it feels selfish, but at the end of the day, you know that whatever you choose to do for yourself is what's going to make you a better mom. It's going to make you better, a better person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to take that time because you know, the hour that you have of the day or whatever time you have, if you are working towards your fitness and working towards your, your health related goals, if by taking that hour, it allows you to be a better significant other, a better yeah. father, a better mother, a better brother, son, whatever it is, you know, if it allows you to be a better person and just be there for the people that, that you, you need to be, I think that that's, you know, the most selfless thing that you can do. You know, I would argue that it's not selfish. So you just have to prioritize your health and, and realize that, you know, no matter what phase of life you're in, that it is a priority and it should always be in your life depending on what phase you're in, it might be less than you would like, you know? I think a lot of people look at fitness as like, oh, I have to be doing the most optimal program or I'm not gonna do it at all. But, you know, really, even if you're getting 30 minute workouts in because you just have a newborn baby and you're starting at a new job that requires a lot of your time or you have kids in sports or just life is busy, you know, all the the daily things that we need to get through, you know, do what you can get done. Everybody has a different amount of time that they can allocate towards their fitness. But at the end of the day, you just have to focus on what you're doing. Don't focus on, oh, I, you know, I could be making better progress if I was doing X, Y, and Z. Or if I had this situation, I could be in shape, you know? that That's bullshit, in my opinion. Like, you can have a there's great workout. There's never a good time. <laughs> yeah, there's never a good time. And, and you just got to focus on what you can do, what you can get done with your time that you have to allocate towards your fitness. Yeah. So let's kind of start by chatting. Like we've already kind of gotten into this topic, but chatting mostly about like physical things, physical barriers that can get in the way and then like jump onto the mental side of things. Yeah. So as far as physical, you know, we talked about time and schedules and, um, some other things that come to mind too is like weather Yeah. for me, you know, like, especially with running, um, obviously if you're strength training, the weather sometimes can get in the way if it's snowing and you're trapped inside so a way to overcome that barrier would be staying home and figuring out a workout to do at home moving your body just because you can't go to the di- just because you can't go to the gym that day um, because it's snowing or for whatever reason you're, you don't have a car that can get you there um, figure out something to do at home and then as far as like running goes if you can't run outside because it's snowing or 
um, something like that, then you can jump on the treadmill. If you don't have a treadmill, you don't have access to a treadmill, um, as far as snowing, I maybe maybe wait on that. <laughs> or just send it. I say just toughen up. I mean, it depends on if it's like <laughs> icy and, and dangerous, but um, the thing of that is like when you're when you're training for a race, you know, you think about like race days and, and when your race is and, and no one can predict what the weather is going to be like on race day. So yeah. why not train in all aspects? All elements. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it comes down to a choice. Like if you have set fitness goals that are important to you and you have a program or you have a plan that you're going to stick to, it comes down to the choice of doing it and adhering to the program, or it comes down to the choice of not adhering to the program. And a fiscal barrier like that, you know, oh, it's snowing. Where for some places, for people that live in the world or the country, maybe they've never even seen snow. So that's not even like an obstacle. But for us here in Nebraska, that is an obstacle sometimes mm -hmm. that does Bundle come up. up. Yeah. So what I want to say about that is you can get a great workout with no equipment, all body weight uh, workouts in 30 minutes. Yeah. And that's still going to get you one step closer towards your fitness goals. Like, yeah, yeah, it might not be the most perfect workout for what you were trying to train for, but it's just one more little brick that you can stack that is going to get you that much closer to your fitness. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's just making that choice. I know during COVID we had very minimal equipment. We were actually living in an apartment at the time and the gym shut down. We both lost our our uh, job, we were working for a commercial gym at this time. We both lost our jobs. We moved into an apartment on, together on Sunday. This is when me and Alyssa first started dating. <laughs> on Monday, we lost our jobs. And like the, later that week, the whole world city shut like down. shut down. The whole world <laughs> shut down, yeah. yeah. And we had like no equipment. I had a pair of dumbbells, two pairs of dumbbells just from my parents' bands. basement. I had some bands. We had like a medicine ball and a pull-up bar that attached in the doorway and yeah. it was like we were just getting our workout in and every single day and it was just a choice yeah and i think that if you make that choice you're going to feel better about it you just have to take it upon yourself to choose your fitness and prioritize that in your life and in your day yeah we tried to order more gym equipment i remember that too and like everything was like on back order oh yeah so then you know the chances of us getting any other equipment was slim to none. So we just had to make do with what we had. Yeah. And really at that point, it's like, you don't have any excuses. You, you, you learn to spice up your workouts. I mean, you're pulling out jump ropes, you're pulling out like things that you maybe did in gym class in high school, like things that are just like to, to some maybe thought to be silly or easy, but you can make things harder. With you just your, gotta get creative. Yeah, yeah. With your body weight, it's really. It forces you to be a little more creative, yep. Yeah, so, and then another physical thing that I that comes to mind too is like injury. So when you have an injury, <clears throat> the best thing to do is let your body recover from that injury, but also know the difference between, okay, is this painful to the point where like I can't, manage through this or is this just maybe you know an injury that maybe I tweak something or, or you know something that I can get past in a, in a week or so um, but overcoming injuries can be so detrimental when you're in a prep because you instantly think oh my gosh this is over I'm, I'm never gonna get through this and then if you give up right then and there you're right you're never gonna get through that but if you find ways to fix that injury, go through some training, go through some recovery to initiate fixing that recovery or that injury, then you can still get through and, and manage to continue your training. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's better to do something than nothing. And say that you get an injury in your shoulder or your upper body, you still can hit lower body. You still can walk. You can still probably run. You can yeah. still probably bike. Like there's a lot of things that you can still do or vice versa. If you hurt something in your lower body or have to have surgery on something in your lower body, you can still do upper body movements. You can get creative. And the main thing I just want to say there is like, don't allow yourself to quit and completely do nothing. Because yeah. if that happens, if you've been in a place where you've had an injury or you're currently dealing with an injury, it sucks. It's not fun. It's not optimal. Yeah. 
But if you allow yourself to keep going to the gym, you're going to be able to get back to where you were and more and build off of where you were before. Versus if you just stop, it's going to take you two, three, four, six months to get back to where you were before you started. Versus if you just maintain that, you would have been able to make so much more progress. So just keep doing something, whether it's very low intensity or very minimal amount of exercise, just keep doing something. Yeah. Cause I think the biggest thing there too is like continuing with that routine. Yeah. So I think the hardest thing for people to get into is a routine. So if you get into that routine and then something comes up, injury, all these physical things that you're overcoming, you know, it, it, the second that you're like, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. The next day comes around and it's, eh, I'll do it tomorrow then you keep making that choice and you're no longer in this routine that you worked so hard to get into. So not every day is going to be a good day. Not every day is going to be a PR day and that's not expected. So give yourself some grace, show up, do as much as you can. And I mean, I think that's the biggest, biggest message there. <laughs> yeah. Another barrier that I know a lot of people experience, we experience this too, is kids you know that's yeah that's something that can be a barrier to your fitness and for us I do feel very blessed that we have childcare, that we have the ability to bring our kids to work if we need to or even to bring our kids to the gym if we need to and they'll just hang out here you know owning our own gym that that is a luxury that we have that maybe a lot of a lot of people don't have but you know a couple things that I can recommend on getting your your workouts in even with a family is you just have to ask yourself like how important is it to you? And if it is important, then you will set your alarm another hour earlier so you can get it up and get up and get it done before your family gets up or go to the gym, get it done before work. Or if there's any way that you and your, your spouse can like trade off like, Hey, I'm going to go to work or sorry, I'm going to go to the gym in the morning before work. And then I'll get the kids after work. You can go to the gym after work or vice versa. Just figure out a system that's going to work for you so that you can reach your goals because it is hard. It's so hard to, to balance fitness and life with a family life, but it's not impossible. And there's lots of people that are doing it. So don't let that be your excuse. Mm -hmm. Just find a way to get it done. Like I said, like we were talking about earlier, may not be the most badass optimal program in the world. Like, professional athlete type workout, but that's not what it requires to make, make progress. You can see awesome progress just doing like 20, 30 minute workouts, you know, just do whatever you can get done because something is better than nothing. But just like I said, ask yourself, how important is it to you? And if it is important, if there's a will, there's a way you're going to find a way to get it done. Yeah. And another way that you can get by with getting your workouts in, if you have kids is by involving them. So I know some gyms may not allow you to bring them to the gym if your kids are young and running around. I, that That's understandable. It could prevent injury for them. Um, it's a liability thing. But if you can do it at home, you can involve them. Like teach them how to do burpees, teach them how to do squats, push-ups, sit-ups. And that becomes fun for them. You know, whatever you are teaching your kids is important to you someday will become important to them. Yeah. So well, that's the hope at least, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's true. It's, you're setting a good example by, by yeah. being the example, you know? So yeah, just, I hear that excuse a lot and I get it, you know, I, I do sympathize with it. Yeah. You know, being a personal trainer, I've heard that excuse time and time again, mm-hmm. but you know, I do also, you know, it's our job to be here and and hold people accountable. And it's like, hey, if we're not getting our work done that we need to get done, then let's find a way that we can get it done. Let's not just keep making this excuse of, ah, kid stuff came up. Ah, this happened, that happened. It's like, I get it, you know, that happens. But if it's consistently happening, that's where you need to find a new structure that's going to work for you. Okay, after work is not not working for me, Mm -hmm. I'm going to come before work. Like, I teach a morning group class and an evening group class. And sometimes I'll have people kind of hop back and forth between both of them where, you know, some phases that morning class works well for people. Cause like get it up, get it done out of the way for some people, it doesn't work well. They, they have to do it after work, you know? So just finding the structure that works for you and, and just not continuing, not getting the work done that needs to be done. That's, that's yeah. a huge thing that just, 
just get it done at the end of the day. Yeah, your your kids, your friends, your family, everyone will thank you because you'll be just a much more nicer person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're just going to be, yeah, you're going to be much happier. You know, you have stress that's going on in your life. Yeah. Exercise is so good at, at helping manage stress mm-hmm. and helping manage anxiety. And and this is something that I lean very heavily into. And it's a good way to kind of channel all that stress and, and just refocus you. For, you know, say you're having a stressful day. Typically, the way my, my day works out, I'll have a midday workout. Mm-hmm. And for me, it just kind of resets myself for the day. And that's, that's something that some people might be like, well, don't you get tired after your workout? Then you have to go back to work. And it's like, yeah, sometimes. But a lot of times it just kind of resets your mind and brings you back down a little more level-headed. If you're stressed about something before, usually you get a good workout in. And it's like either you know what you need to do about the stressful situation or you're not stressed about that situation anymore. Yeah, the endorphins are flowing yes. and, and good positive energy is is uh flowing throughout you so yeah i i also want to like bring up this goes with training um your nutrition as far as like physically making time to pack your lunch you know make your breakfast i know that for some of you that seems impossible i physically cannot get up in the morning or i don't have time to pack my lunch it's it's like jordan said whatever if, if you have a goal and it's important to you, you will find a way to get it done. So if your goal is fat loss, if your goal is to just eat healthier and, and f- have more energy throughout the day by getting in that workout and fueling your body properly, then you will make time for it. Because there is things in life that we make time for without even realizing, like scrolling through your phone and you're on Instagram and you an hour passed. I mean, I'm guilty of this, you know, like, and you're like, holy crap, an hour just went by and I could have done X, Y, and Z. So I do believe that we all have some time throughout the day to just squeeze in a little bit of maybe meal prepping, or if cooking isn't your thing, there is tons of like resources out there where you can get your food made for you for lunch. Uh, Maybe you do that throughout the week. If you have a busy work week, as far as breakfast breakfast goes, you can pre-make your breakfast. You can make overnight oats. You can make egg white, like little muffins in a tin pan and, and add some turkey bacon, add some veggies. There's tons of things. If you go on Pinterest, you can find tons of different ideas that you can plan ahead and have those things on hand. And again, your kids are watching. Your kids are going to see that you're eating better. They're going to make better choices. And there's going to be less stops at, you know, fast food restaurants. And we just want to teach our kids to make better choices too, because, because whatever we're doing, they're watching and they're the next generation. So, (laughs) yeah, I think what you're alluding to is structure. Like we thrive on structure. Everybody thrives on creating structure Yeah. and that structure is going to look so different for everyone, but Nutrition is hard because the workout is one hour of the day. It's like, oh, I checked that box. That one hour is done. I don't have to do it till tomorrow. Yep. Nutrition is something that it resets every single day. You can't celebrate on the good habits that you had yesterday from eating. You have to continually do it. And it's something you have to consciously, consciously make that choice every single couple hours as you're eating throughout the day. So yeah. it is hard. But the biggest thing is structure. Like Mm -hmm. if I have a goal, I have to create structure. I have to let people know what I'm doing. I have to track food to see progress. If, if that's at the end of the day, like if I have a fat loss goal or if I have a certain performance goal, like tracking food is one of the most important things that you can do. Yes. It's tedious. Yes. It's a pain in the ass, but it's the only way, you know, how to, how to streamline your progress and make sure that I'm eating what I need to be eating in the amounts that I need to be eating. Otherwise it's just guessing, you know, and you wouldn't ever leave something that's important to you. You wouldn't ever leave it up to a guess. Like you would make sure, okay, I'm going to check all my, all my boxes that I need to get done in order to reach a goal. Or if there's something you had to do at work, you wouldn't like, Oh, I think this is correct. And then you hand it into your boss and it's like, no, this is not correct. Like you would make sure that it's, it's, it gets done the way that it needs to get done. So if you approach your fitness and your nutrition the same way, you're going to see better progress. And once you start to see that better progress, it just turns into this positive flywheel where it's like, okay, I know that if I want this outcome, I have to put this work in and stay consistent at it in order to reach that, that outcome that I want. 
and then it just turns into this consistent habit that you're you're just living that healthy lifestyle at that point yeah and to add on to that we are human and we will make mistakes we will yes. make mistakes so allow yourself those mistakes sometimes i think people make a mistake as far as like something doesn't fit into their macronutrients um and they'll be like oh my macros are ruined my whole day is ruined let's I'm, just go on a bender yeah i might as well just <laughs> eat a whole pizza and start over tomorrow yeah I, I hate that i hate that like i'll start on monday what why can't you start right now why can't you start like yesterday yeah <laughs> you know because there's no better time to start there's not a good time to start but there's no better time to start than right now and I think the more we allow ourselves to have those mistakes, the more it becomes a lifestyle yes. and, and the more willingly we are to follow it too. And I, I hate to call them mistakes because I think we should allow those, those like treats. Yeah. Those yeah. like meals with family and with friends and going out to dinner. But the biggest thing with that is just being mindful of like, okay, if I'm going to have pizza, should I maybe skip out on, you know, I don't know, like the ice cream, or should I skip out on eating two meals out back to back two days in a row? Just, just being mindful. That is if you're in a, in a deficit and you're trying to diet and be aware of what you're eating. Um, so I think that's important. And that goes with also like training. So if you have one day where you're like, I feel so weak, you know, I usually can curl, you know, twenties and today I'm only curling fifteens speaking for myself there because that happened the other day that but happened today <laughs> <laughs> but but um that was very specific <laughs> this is very specific because i was i was curling 12 and a half <laughs> but normally i can curl 27 and a half <laughs> but yes it's very relatable so it it's okay to like maybe not have as much energy that day but typically you can look back and say okay did i get good sleep no did i fuel my body properly Probably not. Am I totally recovered from my workout yesterday? Maybe not. I mean, if you're doing a workout at night and then you turn around and do a workout in the morning, chances are you're still recovering from that yeah. <laughs> workout. You haven't the night had before. enough meals to to recover every time that happens. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You you can't let your failures from the day before, maybe a week before, carry over. And just because, say, you make a bad choice in your nutrition, or just because you have a bad workout doesn't mean that you're you're done that you can't recover from it that your fitness is over it's just learn from that mistake and and one big thing that we always like to practice and preach is balance when i go through phases where i'm being super anal about my food and very strict and counting macros to a t and i'm putting peanut butter on the scale and it's 33 grams and i divvy off a little bit and now it's 32 so it's an actual serving didn't want to get an extra gram of peanut butter. I that's, feel like you're like, no, I'm talking about me. That's, that's me <laughs> when I get like that. And I do day. not, you know, I don't enjoy that. That's when I really start to like find it harder to stick with it. I'll always stick with it because I've just developed that discipline over the years, but it makes it harder. I don't mm -hmm. enjoy it as much versus when we allow ourselves to have the freedom to take our kids out for dinner yeah. to we had a birthday party last weekend um, for our niece and there was ice cream cake there and i freaking love dairy queen ice cream cake it's and i had a year <laughs> and i had a piece of ice cream cake. yeah it, it didn't ruin my fitness no. i worked my ass off all week yeah. 90 percent of the time my food is structured around whole food sources i have a good carb a good fat a good protein source at each meal that 10% of the time is not going to, not going to ruin your fitness. So yeah. if you allow yourself to practice balance, you're not going to want to, you're not going to find yourself struggling to stick with the program. You're not going to have these crazy cravings and want to go on these benders. It's going to be like, Oh, you know, I, I had dinner with my family and I'm good. And I'm hopping right back on the train, the very next meal or yeah. the very next day. It's not like it continues to follow you. So practicing balance is something that if you add into your life, it's going to be a lot easier to adhere to the program. So don't think that you have to be perfect. Don't strive for perfection. Just strive for consistency. And that's going to lead to the progress you want to see. Yeah. So like just with um, the peanut butter thing, I'm 
guilty of measuring my peanut butter because that is one thing that I feel like I'm not super good at eyeballing. <laughs> That's my hidden talent. Yeah. That is my hidden talent. 32 grams of peanut butter. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm eating like half, usually half. You don't eat 32 spoon. grams of peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, like, but my point to that is eventually doing it for years and years and years, you will be able to eyeball those things. So when we do go out to um, dinner or go to lunch or you know, go over to families and have dinner, you know, it, it's not like, you know, like you don't feel trapped, like, oh my you gosh. bring your scale with you. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, I've been there. We did. Yeah, yeah. We've done that before. And yeah. like the competition days, because there was an end goal, like that was a very specific goal and that needed to be done. So there's a time and a place for that. As far as like just regular, like dieting, I, I think it's healthy to eyeball from time to time. Now, if you do that every single day when you're in a deficit and then you go to step on the scale and you're not seeing results, you can't get frustrated over that. Yeah. You need data to rely More structure. on. structure. Yeah. yeah. So there's a time and a place and that's, that's just kind of one of those mental barriers of, of, um, fitness that comes to mind for me is, is mentally getting past the thought of like always trying to be perfect, whether it's diet, you know, goal related, you know, in the gym, uh, running, like that's been one for me right now, like running at pace. And, you know, you have one day where you're like, I am like sucking wind today and I can't figure out why, uh, you look back at the data and you're like, okay, how was my sleep hydration? Did I fuel properly? All those things. And, um, I think once you go through those throughout your life and, and fitness becomes your li livelihood, you start to learn and you start to adapt and you start to be able to adjust and figure those things out on your own. Yeah. I think that it's, it's so hard to strive for perfection and that that's where a lot of people get lost. They, they mm -hmm. look at it's all or nothing. You know, it's like, if I don't adhere to this program perfectly, I'm not going to do it at all. But that's such a, a slippery slope to go down. And I think that's something that I've learned over the years is like, we are very structured with our workouts and we take a lot of pride. It's like, it's, it's our life. Like you said, it's, it's what I love to do. It's both of our passions. You know, we, we help people every day, try and reach their fitness goals. And then it comes to our workout time. And it's like, sometimes, you know, giving that sort of energy takes away from your own workouts and, and that's okay. You know, that's, that's part of, part of the job, but that's also part of the course. You know, not every single workout is going to be this PR type of workout. That would be great. If, if that's the way it was, you would just see this like straight progression up and like, it'd be crazy, you know? Yeah. But there's like, I was talking about earlier, there's bumps in the road where there's going to be phases where you see a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. There's going to be phases where you see very little progress. There's going to be phases where you're just trying to maintain and just hold on to your fitness, or maybe you're, you had to take a step back and that's perfectly fine. I think just at the end of the day, you have to keep practicing this healthy, healthy lifestyle. And we've talked about this in previous videos too, is you have to have more than body composition based goals. You have to have mm -hmm. more than like, I define my success by what the scale tells me. Like, that is that's a really really dark or that can lead to lead to a really dark place if you're like i'm happy about myself if i'm losing weight i'm not happy about myself if i'm not losing weight and when you change that mindset to like i'm taking pride in in practicing this healthy lifestyle sharing it with my kids and my family yeah. and making this a priority in my life and re realizing that like okay maybe i didn't i didn't lose weight or maybe i didn't hit a PR on, on a certain exercise, but I still did it. I showed up for the workout. I was consistent. I got good health benefits from that workouts, mm -hmm. um, and good longevity benefits from that run. Maybe it wasn't the best run in the world, but you know, you did it. You, you got what you needed to get done. And again, you're just like these, that analogy of you're stacking bricks. You're trying to build this yeah. wall of fitness and it's like, you don't build a wall at once. You just go one brick at a time. Yeah. Sometimes it's a half a brick and sometimes it's like a little tiny piece of a brick. Like, but if you can keep working towards something other than losing weight, gaining muscle, like very big, broad topics and big, broad goals, it's going to be a lot easier to adhere to the program and just start to get fulfillment from your workouts. Like yeah. I get so much 
fulfillment from my workouts and I love to see progress, but it's not when I'm not only happy when I'm seeing progress yeah. happy. Cause I'm just, I'm getting my workouts in and I'm enjoying it. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting to do something that is a, a very big part of my life because you know, a lot of people can't work out. A lot of people can't exercise. There's traumatic things that happen to people and life is short, you know? So you have to, you have to count your blessings and realize that it is such a gift to have your health. And if you have your health, like don't ever take that for granted. You, you can't abuse that. You have to realize that it is such a gift to have your health. Trust the process, embrace the process, be patient. Yeah. And patience. Yeah. Yes. That's one we should touch on. <laughs> yeah. Inconsistency. But I wanted to also on the flip side of that touch on, you know, when you're doing too much. So that's another obstacle that you could be overcoming is the feeling of this might sound crazy to some people, but sometimes you work out too much. Yeah. I'll just say that. <laughs> I mean, you and I have been there like seven days a week when we first got, or when I first got into fitness. And I, I think I can speak for you too on this. Like it was like seven days a week. Cause I yep. was obsessed. I love no days it. off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That used to be a big hashtag. Um, it, <laughs> did you use that hashtag a lot? I did. Hashtag no days off. Yes. Hashtag <laughs> hard work. Hashtag um, grind. Hashtag fit grind. Oh my gosh. So, um, I don't even know where I was going with that. Sorry. So, <laughs> uh, just knowing when to give your body the rest and the recovery that it needs, because yes, it may feel good to work out every day, but your body also needs to recover to be able to exert the energy and the proper energy at each workout. Otherwise, you're never going to see progress because you're never going to be able to give the amount of energy that you want to mm -hmm. when you're trying to hit a PR or, you know, you're trying to go for a long run, but your body's like, you are on E and you need to slow down. And that can look different for people. So for me, it's like, I hate sitting still. <laughs> um, I'll just say that. I just don't, I don't sit still very well. So that rest day for me turns into, okay, I'm going to take this day and I'm going to go to the park with the kids. I'm going to go for a walk with the kids. I'm going to go play tennis with the kids. That's something we really got into yeah. in the summer. Like finding healthy activities that you can do, shoot basketball with the kids, you know, um, but, but still being active, but not pushing our bodies to like extreme measures. Yeah. That's something that you said there. Like we used to work out seven days a week. It was like all day, every day. Like we'd go work out for like two hours at a time. Mm -hmm. And I, we work out six days a week. Now we allow ourselves one rest day. I think we're seeing better progress mm -hmm. and we're able to give better effort yes. on the six workouts which over time is going to accumulate to more progress because I'd rather take six days of good effort versus three days of good effort, two days of okay effort, one day of that was a terrible workout. And one day is like, I literally am so sore. I can't do anything, you know? Yeah. So for us, that was taking a step back and realizing that like, if we want to take two steps forward, we have to take one step back. Yeah. And like you mentioned, just because we're taking a rest day, doesn't mean that we don't do anything like especially as it's getting nicer outside like find ways that you can get outside be active it's just not a structured workout you know like yeah. if you're coming in and you have your structured strength workouts and your structured running workouts or cardio workouts or whatever you're doing in your program the day off you can still have activity well, you can go walk you can go on a bike ride you like you said play tennis you can go play golf you can go do something that is active because our bodies were still meant to move mm -hmm. and you're actually going to feel better the next day versus if you're just a, a couch potato all day, it's going to carry over to that next day. You're just going to feel like lethargic wow. and you're probably going to feel sore too because, mm -hmm. because your muscles didn't get any blood flow and didn't clear out some of that soreness. So just because it's a rest day doesn't mean that it is a don't do jack shit all day type of thing, you know? So yeah. that is something that, that I think is a huge thing. And you just have to realize like, and like we talked about earlier, do what you can do. Just because we work out six days a week doesn't mean that you have to work out six days a week. Start small. Yeah. And, and start with like, ideally, 
I would like to work out six days a week sometime, you know, eventually yeah. I want to get to that point. But right now I'm not even going to the gym. Like, should I start with six days a week? No, no. you should start with like, go two times a week. Yeah. Get that down, get for a couple weeks. Okay, I'm feeling good, I'm building some momentum. It, it's all about building momentum in fitness. Like, okay, let's add a third day. You're feeling really good, okay, let's add a fourth day. And like, I think that's good. You know, four is really good for me right now. I'm seeing good progress. There's yeah. nothing saying that you have to work out every single day. Yeah. On the flip side too, if you have a really extreme goal, maybe you do have to work out seven days a week, you know? Like if your goal is super extreme, it's all about giving and taking and just realizing where you're at with your fitness, what your goals are, and what it's gonna take to get that goal achieved and get it done. Yeah, and when you do take that rest day, something I wanted to mention is that is not a rest day to eat whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when I think of a rest day, I'm like picturing this person like sitting on the couch, lounging back, yep. eating a bag of potato chips. Channel surfing. Netflix is like, are you still yeah. watching? <laughs> <laughs> we noticed that you haven't touched the remote in a while. Yeah. I mean, that's where my brain goes. But I think realistically, a rest day should be movement still fueling your body properly. It doesn't mean eating less necessarily. Maybe you cut back on like your post-workout protein shake that you normally take, making sure you still hit your protein goal for the day, but make, but maybe you just cut back on that post-workout meal because your body wasn't as hungry that day. Yeah. But you're still eating whole foods. Probably not the day to go out and eat a bunch of crap. Probably save that for maybe a leg day or a long run day. Um, so you can utilize those calories a little bit better. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I think, you know, like overall, it's just, it's just finding that balance and, and overcoming your obstacles because your obstacles might look different than my obstacles or Jordan's obstacles. Everybody has different obstacles in their life. And I think, you know, by determining what that looks like for you, like maybe you're, maybe you sit down and you say, okay, I know this was a priority for me. What are some barriers that might be getting in the way of me be, being able to make this a priority? Write those things down. Write down something that you can do to um, fix that barrier. Um, brainstorm some ideas. You know, if you have a husband or you know a partner, you can get with them and and brainstorm some ideas together. Especially if you have kids, so that you guys can work together to get you to your goals. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all about just being consistent with the workouts and the nutrition and living this healthy lifestyle and turning it into that, like framing the mindset around. It's not like I want to lose weight in 30 days and I'm going to cut everything cold turkey. It's, no, mm -hmm. it's turning this into a lifestyle, making small, subtle changes here and there so that eventually we can start doing 80 to 90% of the things right. But it doesn't, happen to have, it doesn't have to happen overnight. Yeah. And usually I would say that when it does happen overnight, it's not gonna last. So find ways that you can start to create a lot of structure around your workouts and your nutrition and what's gonna work for you. If you're someone that is a very structured person and you need to count every calorie and you need to track every workout in an app or on a piece of paper, like I've been there in my life and I think I think that's a valuable phase to go through and you learn a lot about that, but I'm not saying that that has to be the way it is to make progress. Yeah. You know, you, you can, everyone's so different with what they need to get done and what they need to do to achieve the results they're looking for. But the most common theme is consistency and a healthy lifestyle. Like if you are solely focused on just body composition based goals, mm -hmm. losing weight, building muscle, those things come slow, you know, and it's, yeah. it's really frustrating because you can be doing all the things right. And sometimes it just takes time and it takes patience yeah. like we talked about. So just finding some structure and enjoying your workouts, getting fulfillment from them and realizing that you don't have to be perfect is a huge step that you can take. You just have to find out what's going to work for you. And everybody has stress. Everybody has responsibilities that they need to get done. We have obstacles, like we mentioned throughout the video and this podcast, but you have to find a way that you can overcome those obstacles. And if you're, you keep these obstacles keep coming up, you need to go back to the drawing board and figure out, okay, what else do I need to do to get past these obstacles? Like what I'm doing isn't working. This problem keeps coming up. 
what do I need to do to change something so that I can get my workouts in? Or every week I go on a bender on the weekends and I just can't seem to like not go on a bender. What structure can you do to create more of an environment where you don't go on a bender every weekend? Because that's something that can ruin your fitness and your, your, mm-hmm. your body composition based goals. You know, say that you tracked your food all week, you're doing really good. And then you go Saturday comes around, you go out, have drinks, pizza on the weekend, ice cream, and then turn around on Monday and you're back at square one. And all that work that you just did for the entire week is washed away. So creating some structure, telling people your goals, maybe hiring a coach or finding a community of like-minded people can really go a long ways. And that's just that specific goal. You know, there's lots of other goals that I can think of, but you just have to find the structure and find out what works for you and then just stick with it and be consistent with it. It's so cliche to say, but just like anything in life, like if you can be consistent with something, you're going to get better at it. If you can consistently come in and work out and track your food, you're going to reach your goals eventually. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's going to happen. You just have to stay consistent with it. And when there's bad days, just keep staying the course. Don't give up, get through those hard times. Cause you're going to learn so much about yourself in the process. You only have one life. You only have one body and it's up to you to determine what you want that to look like. So yeah. figure out what's important to you and come up with a goal, come up with a plan and get it done. Yeah. I love that. Overcome obstacles. You're such a motivational speaker. <laughs> I love no, seriously, that was really good. I love that. Yeah. You, it's true. You, you get one life and there's no guarantee of tomorrow and you have to just take it one day at a time and, and just enjoy the process because I've talked about this before. Like everybody's so like, Oh, I'm going to be happy when I reach this goal. No. Oh, I'm going to be less stressed when I reach this goal. No, the whole, the whole idea is the process, what you learn about yourself, yeah, what journey. you get from the journey. Yes, exactly. Like just start to embrace each day and take these little victories where you get them. Yeah. Oh, I, I tracked my food. Wasn't great, but it was better than yesterday. I hit a PR on my workouts. I had fun working out today. I worked out with a friend that hadn't seen in a while and we, we had a good workouts. Um, or I had a bad workout. It wasn't a good day. Like the mm-hmm. lessons that you learn from that, the process is, is where it's at. You know, when you reach that goal, yes, it's, it's satisfying. And it's like, I, you feel a lot of sense of pride, but the process is really where it's at. Like that's where you learn so much about yourself and that's where you really grow. Yeah. I think that's the funnest part. Honestly, once you get to that goal, you're like, okay, now what? Yeah. Like <laughs> you're always going to ask what's the next thing. Yeah. Always. No matter what the goal is, when you reach that bar, you're always going to be like, Okay, now I want to. I bench press three hundred pounds. I want to bench press three hundred fifty pounds. Yep. You know, You're I ran a six minute mile. Now I want to run a five thirty mile. It's like, yep. so just realize that, like, yeah, you want to achieve goals and you want to set new goals and always be working towards something. But just make sure you're enjoying it too. Like, make sure you're getting fulfillment from your workouts, the food that you're eating, you're enjoying. Because mm-hmm. if you're not, for the most part, like, yeah, it's not going to be like cookies and ice cream and pizza. Like, why not? but you can still eat really high quality, good tasting food. That's going to fill your body. You know, like we eat a lot of meat. We eat a lot of like vegetables, fruit, potatoes, rice. We'll find ways to make food, food that we like. We'll do like homemade pizzas. We'll make pasta with certain pasta noodles that are a little bit better options. Like you can still find ways to enjoy the process rather than just like, Oh, I'm eating chicken and, and rice and broccoli every single meal we eat a lot of chicken rice and broccoli but it's also like if you don't like chicken rice and broccoli you don't have to eat chicken rice and broccoli every meal yeah. so just enjoy it that's all i'm saying here yep and and try different recipes make it fun make it exciting and again if you have kids bring them and let them try yeah. new recipes with you or let them brainstorm with you one of one of our son's crew he loves to cook so he's always like coming home with cookbooks and saying can we try this and i'll like spin it a little bit to make it a little more healthy but yeah just just kind of like turning it into um a family thing and everybody encouraging each other and encouraging movement and encouraging healthy eating habits becomes becomes you know the norm in your family yeah it's so powerful too like you mentioned earlier like if you if you set good habits for your children as they're young 
and there's a fine line. Like, you know, we don't tell our kids that they have to eat everything that we eat. And it's not like you can't have candy. You can't have this. Cause more than likely what's going to happen is when they go off on their own or when they go to their friend's house, they're going to go on benders, you know, yeah, because they're, they're that. denied the sugar or the pop or, you know, whatever it is. But if you just teach them healthy habits, like think of how much of a positive impact that's, that's going to have on your children. But then also as they start to grow up, they have families of their own, they're going to emulate the same things that you did, you yeah. know, as, as they were young. So it's like, it's such a positive impact, not only on your family, but like your family tree, you know? Yeah. So like, I want our grandchildren our great grandchildren and our great, great grandchildren and all of our family members down the road to live a healthy lifestyle and just have their health. And that starts by the choices that we're making here, you know, and involving our children in that. So it's so powerful and it's, it is, it, it's big, you know, it's bigger yeah. than, than yourself. It's bigger than, than just us. It's, yeah. you know, could positively impact our entire family tree. Yeah. And when we're teaching them those good habits, like for example, we'll tell the kids, you know, if you don't want to eat all of your dinner, that's fine. Cause I, I don't want them to like be force fed. Like if you're not hungry, <laughs> like, you know, you don't have to eat. Suck I mean, it up. <laughs> yeah. That's just teaching like bad, you know, bad, um, eating habits. Like yeah. they need to know when they're full and, yeah. and understand those things, but they're also children. So they're going to manipulate you and, and try to say they're full. And then 20 minutes later, go reach for the candy drawer. Um, so something that helps with that is just saying, okay, this is what's for dinner. If you do want something later, like a bedtime snack, or you want a piece of candy after dinner, you know, you do have to eat what's on your plate because that's just, that's just the rules. There's room for candy. <laughs> there's room for broccoli. <laughs> yes, exactly. And yeah. so I think, yeah, that's just a, it's a good healthy habit to, you know, teach the kids and also keeps us accountable because yeah. <laughs> if we're not doing it, but we're telling them to do it, they're going to be like, well, hold up, wait. Yeah, you guys are hypocrites. <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah. We're going to be in the pantry, like shoving candy in her. <laughs> Oreo comes like you're in the pantry hiding, eating an Oreo. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, you didn't eat all your broccoli. <laughs> you can't have that. Your broccoli's in the trash. <laughs> yeah. So, so overall, these are tips to overcome barriers. Everyone has obstacles. Everyone has barriers towards reaching their fitness goals. And, you know, at the end of the day, you just have to find a way to get it done. You have to find a way to create some structure in your life. And if you can do that, you're going to reach your fitness goals. And you're going to get a lot of fulfillment from the process of living this healthy lifestyle. Yep. So we're not getting started on Monday. We're not getting started tomorrow. Start right now. Yeah. Encourage everyone to, to make a healthy choice today. You're listening to this podcast. If you've made it to this point in the podcast, thank you for listening to the entire podcast. Yeah. Now I encourage you to go make a healthy choice. So, And we'll see you guys in the next one.